welcome back to my channel once again today is going to be the making of this neckline you, you are seeing on the screen okay it's really a high neckline but it is going to have some button loops at the center so if you look at that neckline you can see it's really at the natural neckline okay it is a high neck and you will see the buttons running all the way to the waist okay or before the waist and then you will see that the other from the waist down is also on fold okay meaning that there is no button uh, allowance added to it okay so i'm going to use this pattern to show you how you can add your button loops without cutting out or adding your button allowances okay you know normally as i have this pattern if i'm making a, an outfit that has a button in front all i need to do on my pattern is to add my one one inch for button allowances so but for now we are not going to add any button allowance to this pattern this is my center front i'm using this pattern to show you how you can achieve that and if you look at this you can see my neckline is on the natural neckline what do I mean by that? I mean I have 3 inches by 3 inches, which is standard for normal neckline. Can you see? So I have my 3 inches by 3 inches. So that means this outfit is going to be a high neckline. Okay. So at this 3 inches by 3 inches neckline I have, you can see there is some ease to that neck neckline. If you look at that neckline so well, there is some ease. So to add that is, I'll just come from this point of my neckline on the neck width. I'll be adding 0.5 to my neck width and coming to the neck depth, I'll also add 0.5. So that means I'm going to recreate my neckline right away. Okay. So I'll be using dotted lines to show you the new neckline I have for this outfit. So now you can see that that neckline also has a collar. The collar in there is a mandarin collar, okay? But I will be dropping the link to how to make a mandarin collar on the description box below so you can see how you can make it and attach to this. But the purpose of this tutorial is to show you how to achieve those button loops without a button allowance. I believe you understand that. So that means we are going to cut this on fold, okay? And it will still have a button. This will be cut on fold, the center front, but will still have a button to it. So how are we going to achieve it? That is the purpose of this tutorial. Now, if you look at that gown, if you can have a full picture of the gown, the gown is actually a, a, is a really a long gown, okay? And you can see it's a free gown as well. Okay, so it wants to look like a, a sheep gown uh, uh, or A-line gown cut on, uh, uh, cut in on bias. Okay, what I mean by cutting in bias, you can see some flay effect from the hip going down to the hem. Okay, so all you need to do is this. If you want to cut it an A-line, you can cut an A-line. I also have a, a video I'll be dropping on the description box below. For an A-line, I also have a video for a sheep gown. I'll drop all on the description box below. So you'll be able to know how many E's you will add after making your fitted gown, okay? If it's a sheep gown or A-line, okay, taking your round measurement, that is what I mean. Taking your bust area divided by 4, your waist divided by 4, okay? Then you'll be able to know how many E's you will add to the waist and to the chest to achieve that effect. So I will drop everything on the description. But after watching those videos, either the A-line or the sheep gown, any one you want to make use of for this outfit, please make sure for the play effect you keep it unbiased. I mean your fabric will be unbiased. What do I mean by unbiased? I'll just use a little piece of fabric I have in here to show you what I mean. Before you cut this pattern, okay, don't keep it this way. You see, the normal way we, we do this is to fold our fabric. This is my fabric right now. 
all i will do when i want to cut i'm cutting on fold right now you can see i'll just place my pattern starting from this way. please don't do that so if you want to cut this and have that flare effect below it all you need to do is this if this is my fabric i'll just place it on bias i'll pick up one end of it and place it this way can you see i'm placing it this way this is bias like a triangle can you see so that means your edge of your pattern your front um your center front will be placed on this part okay making sure that this part has the the shoulder width i believe you understand what i mean okay so that is what i mean when cutting it after adding all your ease allowance i will drop every link on the description so that you check it out so back to our tutorial right now i'm going to cut out this pattern i have in here right now i'm going to cut it out the way you see it because that is what i want to show you how to achieve this particular neckline so this particular neckline right now with button loops okay the opening is before the waist okay let me say two inches before the waist or you can also come a little above or maybe below the uh, bust point okay you can alter this pattern the way you want but i'll just make the opening before two inches before the waist okay so right now it means from my neckline i'll be having from the new created neckline i'll be having 11 and a half so i have 11 and a half here so when i'm cutting on my fabric I'll be making use of this 11 and a half. So let me quickly cut out this. Remember, it's going to have a button, but it doesn't have a button allowance. So how we are going to achieve this is this. I'll just quickly cut, 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 cut. Okay, I'm cutting through the center front right now. And I'll cut through the new neckline because I need an ease. To it can you see so I will cut through my shoulder I'm going to cut okay so that is how I want my own uh, although my own is not a gown it's just a top okay so that's the shape of the top I want to make use of this so this is what I have. So what does that mean? It means that neckline can go for anything. It can go for a gown. It can go for a top. It can go for anything at all. So now our focus is to achieve this without, you can see there is no, it's just the bodies I have in here and it's going to be cut on fold. No button allowed, but still there is a button in front of it. So let's go into this tutorial to know how we can achieve this button without a button allowance. So this is the front bodies of this top okay so i'm just showing you what how to achieve that button loose okay so right now i came up by two inches that is where i want the loop to stop so i'm going to create a facing to this and to create this facing i'll first of all come to the shoulder line and i'll take the measurement of the shoulder the full measurement of the shoulder i have here is 4.2 uh, two five so half of it will be in between two and uh, 2.25 so I've gotten the half of it so I'll just measure two okay just like that you can see what I'm doing okay all right so having done that the next thing I want to do is to determine my facing for the button okay so my facing for the button I want to come in by two and a half okay so at that point of two and a half inches I'm going to make my I'm trying to create out my facing in here so I'll measure two and a half at the very close to my neckline because I need to connect the boot to the neckline facing okay so you can see what I have in here so I'm going to use my curve ruler to blend up these lines I just made okay so at two two and two inches and a little two point two five can you see what I have so I'll just blend up okay I'll just use the curvy part of this to give it a little fine shape 
Can you see what I have right now? So this is going to serve as my facing and this facing will also be cut on fold. So what I'm going to do right now is to trace out. I'm going to quickly trace out this, okay? Using either my tracing wheel or whatever. So this is my facing right now. I'm going to trace it out. So I will take away my pins right now and trace it out. I'll now come out with the fabric itself and the facing itself so I can show you how you can achieve that. All right, people, so you can see I've cut out my facing right now and you can see I added my uh, seam allowances all through 0.5 all through because I'm going to stitch, okay? I'm going to stitch from this point when after adding my button loops and i'll also or i can also overlock it in my overlock my overlocking machine okay so this is the facing how it's going to look like and you can see this is the the top okay so the facing is going to be like this can you see so you can see it's matching up already can you see and it's looking beautiful as well so i'm going to show you how you are going to achieve that button okay so you can see everything is on food but still we are going to achieve the button right now so but before i do that i want to show you once again the loops i'm going to use for that those button the strip for the loop so this strip for the loop is measured 1.5 okay is measured 1.5 inch by width okay so you can cut out as long as you want okay depending on how long you need the loops for the buttons to be so I'll quickly go to my machine right now to sew these loops and I'm going to sew it folding one end this way can you see how I'm doing that I'll fold another end so I'll match up the two 1.5 ends you can see how I match them equally then I'm going to turn it this way and i'll stitch i will stitch at the tip of it i'm not stitching in between i'm going to stitch can you see where i'm going to add the edge so i'll run my loops all through till i finish up what i have in here then i'll come out to show you how to fix it right to the bottom space so you can see right now i'm done sewing my loops can you see the loops you can see how i sewed it i folded in the two parts like i showed you and i've sewn at the tip so right now i'm going to set it aside so we can start working on this how to make our buttons so right now you can see i'm facing right side to right side of the of the garment okay both for the facing and for the garment itself i'm facing right side to right side so right away i'm going to first of all mark out i'll hold down with my pin okay i'll make sure i arrange the edges properly and hold it down with my pin all right so at this point i have it held down so i'm going to find the center front okay by right i'm, I'm supposed to make a crease line okay uh of the set of the center front okay but since i didn't make that i'll just take the midpoint so the midpoint i have in here is 3.25 you can see is at the center as well so i'll also make another 3.25 to get a straight line and i'm going to rule that line across i'm going so the next thing i did right here is to find the midpoint of my garment you can see the midpoint right now and you can see i marked a straight line at the midpoint can you see with my chalk i made a straight line at the midpoint and this line you are seeing here is measuring 11 and a half remember it was 11 and a half on the pattern paper so i will add half inch of seam allowance so i have 12 and a half so this is where my button is going to end can you see so right now i also find the midpoint of this okay the same thing i did here is also what i did at this point can you see so i also found the mid point okay all right so now i found the midpoint but on coming up to this part 
I came up from the edge by one inch and stopped okay so that is also the length I have in here is 11 and a half okay so I'll also have 11 and a half okay let us just keep it at 11 because I need it to turn very well all right so now that we've done this the next thing I'm going to do before placing this to sew to stitch okay the first thing I'm going to do is to place my loops. You can see I have my loops in here and you can see all of them. That is how I'm going to place it. And this loop measures three inches, okay, by length. This depends on the kind of button you want to use. If you are using a medium size button, you can see the hole in there for the loop. You can see the hole is for medium size. So it depends on the kind of button you have that will tell you how your length of your loop will look like. So right now I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 loops. So these 13 loops, I'm going to insert them on 11 and a half, okay? So which means it will be less than, I will place them at less than 1, 1 inch, okay? 11 and a half and I have 13. Okay, so I'll just make a mark. I'll be making my marks right now. I will subdivide them three quarter, three quarter of an inch to make sure I have the the loops at uh, the thirteen loops kept together the way I need them. So now you can see I've divided my loops. Okay, the line right now. You can see what I have. The divisions is thirteen. So if you have to count this, not these lines one okay i gave uh, a space of 0 0.5 for the stitching of the neckline and i start measuring three quarter one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen you can see and i left another space of 0 0.5 for the uh, before the end so you can see how it's looking like right now so that means i'm going to stitch my loops that is the first thing i'm going to do this is my loop of three inches so i'm going to fold my loop you can see how i'm twisting the loop can you see all right so now i've crossed the loop and i also bend it this way you can see how i bent it okay so right now you can see what i have here is not the same with what i have here. you can see this part is folding in this way why this part is open so right now this is the part i need to be at the front so i'm going to face it this part i'm facing it down this way so when we turn it we'll have it so right now i'm going to take this loop as it is right now and i'm going to place it this way okay so you can see the line i have here this is very important You're, you are going to place your loop after 0 0.5 inch okay so after 0 0.5 inch i'll just take a measurement of 0 0.5 inch before i place my loop so it means i'll be placing these loops right now the edge is in fact to get it the edge has to be on the line you can see the edge is on the line can you see that and i'll be stitching after 0 0.5 okay so i'll go to my machine right now i will stitch each loop after 0 0.5 of this line making sure the edge touches this part okay and you can see how i'm placing it i'm placing it this way okay so that when i turn it it will turn this way can you see so let me stitch it and bring it for you to see so viewers you can see i'm done with my loops okay so you can see how the loops are well arranged and you can see the way that I have those loops in there. You can see how they are facing. So at the end of the day, when it is turned, it will face this way. Can you see? Okay, make sure you face it this way, the way it is. So when you turn it, you have it, you have it this way. Can you see? All right, so now you can still see my line. I sewed after 0 0.5 from the line. 0 0.5 away from the line, but I allow the loop uh, open end to touch the line okay make sure you place the loop open end on the lines okay you can see that i'm zooming my camera for you to see all right so having done that the next thing is the facing right now 
I'm going to face my facing. You can see the midpoint of the facing and the midpoint of on the top is the same. So I'll make sure I match the points, the lines together appropriately. And I'm going to pin it down as well. Okay, so I'll pin it down, okay? And once I pin it down, I'll make sure this line matches exactly with the line of the blouse. Can you see? So I'll pin it down right now. And after doing that, I'll go to my machine and I'm going to sew at 0 0.5, okay, on top of the facing. Zero point. You can see my mark of 0 0.5 inch on the facing. You can see the mark of 0 0.5. So I'm going to sew on the facing at 0 0.5, 0 0.5. Once I get to this point, okay, before I get to this point, I'll just make like a V, make another V and connect the 0 0.5. So let me go and sew it and bring it for you to see what I'm explaining right here. All right, people, so you can see I'm done stitching my, my loop, okay? Can you see with my facing? This is what I have. You can see how I angled it. Okay, I stitched at 0 0.25. Please correct it, not 0 0.5, because 0 0.5 will give you a whole one inch. But at this point, I have only half an inch. Can you see? So I have half an inch space so that I don't have too much gap for the for the closing. Okay, so make sure everything from the center line is 0 0.25, 0 0.2. That's a quarter of an inch, a quarter of an inch, and that is what you use to stitch your loop as well. Okay. Initially, I told you it was 0 0.5, but 0 0.5 will leave one inch gap, and that is too much for it. So now you can see what I have. I sewed at 0 0.25, that's a quarter of an inch, right from the beginning. And coming to the end, I angled it to meet up this, okay? That is how you are supposed to do it. So now I'm going to cut on the center line right now. The line I marked, I'm going to cut it open right away can you see so i'll cut it open and once i reach this part i will just bring it a little close can you see very close but please don't cut on your stitching line so you can see what we have right now people all right so now i'm going to turn 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 i'm going to turn it so you can see the result of what we have right now for our loop can you see so this is how you can achieve a button with loop at the front without a seam button allowance okay so you see what i have looking so beautiful right now so i'm going to give it a good press or i can also top stitch so whatever thing you want to do you can do okay so at least you know what to do right now so I'm going to top stitch on top of it following this line. I will just rub my stitches to this point and I'll come over this way. I'll top stitch on top of it. Okay. I'll make sure I top stitch. So once I top stitch, you can see what I have right now. Okay. So this is the back of it. Can you see the back part of the loop right now? You can see that's why I asked you to face it the way you face. So when you, and this is your facing. So what you are going to do right now is to do the cut out the back part of it. You know how to fix your facing. You make sure you fix everything. Then the mandarin color video is on a 12 pieces top, 12 pieces bustier blouse. I'll be dropping the link on 12 pieces bustier. Towards the ending of it, you will see the, how the mandarin color is being cut. So you can now follow exactly what you have on that video to cut out your mandarin neckline okay to attach to this and that will now make it a complete top all right so you can see how to achieve your loop so this loop can be used anywhere if this is the back piece of your clothes your garment you can use it at the back you can use it at the front you can use it anywhere 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 so the most important thing is to see how it's being achieved can you see that so you now add your buttons you place your loops and make your points and stitch your button to it and you are good to go okay so thank you very much for coming to this tutorial i believe you learned something 
in this tutorial please if you are new to this channel kindly subscribe turn on your notification bell to receive videos like this each week like this video share to family and friends drop your comments on the comment section and your suggestions as well so thank you very much for staying by and stopping by to watch Simbrai Fashion Academy tutorial details. Thank you and have a good day. Bye.